How many of you know that God is a delivering God? God, He is so awesome. He is so awesome. I love getting in the presence of God. And you know, Pastor called me uh, last Wednesday night right before prayer meeting. He asked if I would, if I was had a message laid around I could preach. And I said, I, not really. But I think I, I probably can come up with something. And you know we can all probably take a word that God gives us and turn it into a message. First Peter tells us we should have a reason for our hope at every given moment. My hope is in him. I'm a man. I can fail you. I might have some stinking thinking going on, but my God is a holy and righteous God. He changes not. He does not lie. He's omnipresent. That means anywhere that you are, He's with you. Even when you are sinning, he knows everything about it. Sometimes we act surprised when God finds out. It, it, it amazes me. And we feel like we can hide. And uh, yesterday morning, God finally started speaking to me about a contrite spirit. God loves a contract spirit. What is a contract spirit? That is a broken, crushed, humbled spirit. David had one. He committed adultery. He committed murder. And you can believe it was haunting this man because he was a man after God's own heart. And he carried it around about a year. And you know, you could probably hold up a bottle of water. It, it's not that heavy. But the longer you hold it, your arm's going to get weak. You're going to struggle to hold up even a bottle of water. And sin does the same thing. You start becoming weak. You become to start to doubt. Fear will come in. You start second guess what you have heard from God. And God wants me to tell you this morning that we need to have a contrite spirit about us we need to be broken for God if we have something like the words that have been coming forth this morning praise God that God uses men and women with gifts of knowledge I'm telling you that it, it, it God just blows me out of the water because I've been struggling I've been struggling trying to get a message together and, and, and sometimes it, it will I don't know if you prepared the message before sometimes it'll come like that but you really want to hear what God wants to say you just don't want to come up with something and, and just have a message it's, that's not what it's about. You don't want to come up here to be seen and say, Brother Dean, you did a good job. You know, when everybody gives you a pat on the back, you leave, leave sometimes like, really? Because you, you don't know if you really spoken what God wants to speak through you. But I want you to know this morning 
whatever you've done, wherever you're at, God loves a contrite spirit, a broken person. See, he can take a, in a, in a contrite spirit. Now, we can take Saul, King Saul, and David as examples. King Saul tried to blame it on the people when he was confronted by the sin. If you read the Psalms, when David finally confessed his sin, he was blaming only himself. He wasn't looking at his co-workers. He wasn't looking at his job. And when he confessed, he confessed to his God. He began to confess that I know that you're full of love and kindness. I know that you're a merciful God. I know I messed up. I know I'm not pleasing to you. But would you have mercy on me today? Would you not take your Holy Spirit from me? And sometimes we feel like we've messed up. We went too far. We went over the edge. And we feel like we cannot get back to God. That's a bad place to be. I've been there. I felt like I messed up so bad that God could not use me. I want to encourage you this morning. If he started a good work in you, he's going to complete it. He is creator of heaven and earth. He knows everything that you was going to do before you did it. He knew when you was going to repent. But I want you to know today's a new day. Today's a new day. Today, you can get right with God and serve him wholeheartedly. I don't like to start over. I've had to start over so many times in my life. <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> Starting over ain't so bad, especially when you can start seeing what God is starting to mold and, and shape in your life. <clears throat> I was telling my wife, he had to work with a bad chunk of clay when he, he put me on the potter's wheel. It was bad, Josh. I, he still could work on this area. But you know what? He's working on a man's heart. That's where he's going for. Once he gets your heart clean... Glory to God. All the other stuff, it's just like the domino effect. You begin to start talking right. You begin to start thinking right. You begin to start praying right. Glory to God. I want to tell you something. Wednesday night, when we have prayer, glory to God, we get here, I get excited now. I used to dread to come to, the, to prayer meetings because I didn't know how to pray. And, and sometimes I still think I don't know how to pray. But when you allow the spirit of the living God to begin to pray through you, you start say, oh, my gosh, God, that was good. Lord, just keep on, keep on. And you don't realize, last Wednesday, we, we went through every pew when we prayed for every one of you. We, we know where you sit, most of you. You have assigned seats at sometimes, and we know where everybody's sitting, glory to God. And we called out your name before God. We prayed. We anointed you before the Lord of heaven and earth. I want to tell you, we may forget your name. We may forget who you are sometimes, but God never forgets you. He has inscribed you in the palm of his righteous hand. Hallelujah. We serve a good, good God. And I want you to know something. Church cannot be no normal anymore. Time is ticking away. Just like Sister Paula was talking about, things may be hindering you. You may have the weight of the world on your shoulders this morning. Your children might be going crazy. 
your spouse might be doing whatever the spouses do. Glory to God. I love my wife. Glory to God. She is an awesome lady of God. And you know what? It, it amazes me when God puts a man and woman together and, and they become as one flesh and they live for the Lord, how much they have in common, how much they love each other. I thought I would never love a person like I love my wife. It, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. God is truly amazing. But that was God ordained. He loves marriage. You ought to love your wife. You ought to love your husband. Even though they make you mad as fire sometimes, you ought to be, what? Yeah, I know, that's hard to believe, ain't it, Terry? You know what? I got a message on unguarded moments. All it takes is one unguarded moment. People are in prison today for an unguarded moment. People are divorced today for one unguarded moment. You can't allow those, because the enemy, you know what he does? He comes in like a flood. He loves that. He wants to jump on that. He has a heyday. Boys, we got him. We're going to hang him on the wall today. They're going to be like Josh's big deer hanging on the wall. Just, it, it's going to be a trophy that's none other. But you know what? God has equipped you with his word. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Perfect love casts out fear. If you feel like your marriage is, is not going where it should be, here's an altar. Here's an altar. Pray for your spouse. Don't, don't relent. Don't back up. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. There was a man that they brought Jesus. He was blind. And Jesus touched him. And when he, he led him out of the city, and he touched him. And Jesus asked him, can you see? And he said, I can see men walking around, and they look like trees. Jesus touched him a second time. And he said, lift your head up. What do you see now? He said, I can see clearly. I know that some of you, or the majority of you, have been touched by God. But sometimes we have to have that second touch. Sometimes we get content where we're at. I'm not content anymore. I really believe that church cannot be the same, same, oh, same, oh. I believe time is ticking away. The hour is getting closer and closer. Jesus' hand is on the doorknob. He's ready to come to get his bride, and we got to be prepared. The oil in our lamps cannot be low. We got to be full in this hour. We got to be listening what our kids are saying. They're hurting out there. They may have known God, served God a season in their life, but they may have strayed. They, I, we took my youngest son yesterday to Ball State, and when we got up 
in that area where he's staying at, all these college kids are there, and all I could see was Sin City. Oh, my gosh. I didn't go to college, but I had a wild high school. But you know what? I, I, and uh, the grandmother, the roommate that my son's going to be staying with, his grandmother said that we need to put a Bible on their coffee table. We need to do more than just put the Bible on their coffee table. We're going to have to intercede on their behalf. We're going to have to labor like we've never labored before. I fall short in that sometimes because all I see is the circumstances sometimes and they know better. That's the daddy in me. How many times has God looked at us and said, man, they know better. They got my word. They got my son. He's on the right hand of the Father interceding on their behalf and look at them now. Hallelujah. It's getting to be desperate times out there. I didn't come to bring a a discouraging word, but an encouraging word. I know things are getting darker. It seems like like the church is slipping away, but I don't believe that. I believe that the church is going to get stronger, and it's through the men and women of God that can hear God's voice. You're going to have to get a little bit closer, preach the word a couple of Wednesdays, draw close to me. In James 4, 8, it says, draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. Who draws close first? You do. And I guarantee you, when you start drawing close, because I know that in my own personal life, when you start drawing close to God, he will, he will passionately come after you. He loves you. He wants you to succeed in everything. But you've got to know your God. Those who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. But if you don't know your God, a lot of people know God, but do they know They know of God, but do they know God? Hallelujah. you got to know your God. Ephesians chapter 3 says he is more than able. He's not only more than able, he can do it seedingly, abundantly, above anything you can think of or ask. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you today. If you got all this stuff that, that's been weighing on your heart, that you feel like th- there's no hope, there's no peace, there's no joy in my life anymore, I'm consumed with the work. I'm consumed with raising my kids. I'm consumed at, at my uh, church. I, it's just no time anymore. We, I can't get alone with God. You have to make that time. I want to challenge you this morning to make that time. He wants to give you another touch where you can see things clearer than you've ever seen before. He doesn't want you in a pit, in that miry pit, trying to get out. He wants you to lift you up this morning. But you can't tie his hands. you got to call on him. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in, in just some things. No. All things. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I know this ain't no shouting message. This ain't no big 
encouraging words sometimes. It don't seem like, but I want to encourage you that today is a day that the Lord has made. You can rejoice and be glad in it. You have to make the choices. That's what this message is about. You making choices to draw nearer to God. If you have that contract spirit, God loves it. He wants you to, to get right with him this morning. He wants you to draw near him this morning. Don't think you went too far. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change me. God wants to change me. Hallelujah. This is one of the things that we prayed for a couple of weeks ago. Ask God to to pray for our ears, our tear, and our fear. We got to have God's hear God's voice to get His direction and His wisdom. So pray for my pray for people's ears. Amen. It's just not physical. You got to have spiritual hearing. Amen. Pray for people's tears. That people would be broken for the word of God. That they would be broken for the brothers and sisters in Christ. For the, for the salvation of the people that are dying and lost in the world. And here's pray for the fear. We always think fear is negative, but... We have to have a holy reverence for God, our Lord. We got to pray for his presence. We got to know that he is a holy and just God. I want you to pray for that this week. We cannot grow cold in this hour. We got to be hotter than we ever have been in the church history. Hallelujah. You got to have a brokenness about you. If you don't, pray for it. I I believe me, God will give you a brokenness. He really will. And pray for to be reverence in God. Have that fear. Church can't be normal. We can't come in here and write our grocery list and expect to hear a word from God. We got to have a fear that God is going to tabernacle with us in this place. He said, my house is a house of prayer. Hallelujah. We got to have that fear that God is going to meet with us and he's going to speak through us and he's going to use us when we go out of these four walls to, to bring a dying and lost world to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. God is good. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for this morning. On this Lord's day, we thank you, Father God, for your presence this morning. I thank you, Lord, for every contrite spirit in this place. 
I pray, Father God, for the brokenhearted, Lord God. Those who have been in prison spiritually, Lord God. Those who are bound in, in iniquity and, and, and bound in, in uh, fear, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you would kick those doors wide open this morning in their lives. You're a delivering God. You can take a situation and, and change it in for your glory, Lord God, for your purpose. I pray that purpose would rise up in people's lives today. I pray, Father God, that today's a new day. I pray, Father God, for the, the furnished family, Lord God. Lord, our hearts ache when our brothers and sisters in Christ ache. Lord, but Lord, we rejoice when our brothers and sisters rejoice. And I know, Father God, that our brother is a follower of Jesus Christ. I know that you are his Lord of Lord and as King of Kings. He knows you as healer. He knows you as Lord. And we just put him into your care. You said cast all of our care upon you for you care for us. All of our burdens, Lord God. And I speak life. I speak wholeness. I speak deliverance. I speak healing into that family today. Lord, you are the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the healer, not, of our, not only of our mortal body, but our, our spiritual body, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you can, there's no distance in the spirit realm, that you can touch them right where they're at, Lord God. I pray that you would touch that entire family. That, Lord, that you would give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we know that all things are possible through you. And we thank you, Lord God, what you're doing, Lord God, and what you're about to do. I thank you, Lord, for miracles, Lord God. Sometimes we have to get in miracle territory to get a miracle. And, Lord, I pray, Father God, that we get in that territory today. I pray, Father God, for each and every child in this building, Lord God. I pray today, Lord God, that you would just speak to their hearts today. That, Lord, that you would give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, whatever they're going through today, Lord God, I pray on their behalf. I pray, Father God, that you would just give them joy. In midst of a storm. I know, Father God, even kids struggle sometimes. So, Father, I pray for each and every child. I pray, pray for each and every parent here today that are struggling. Whether it be financially, business, whatever it is, Lord God, I pray, Father God, that you would just give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. That you would re revive their joy back in their lives. I pray, Father God, for husbands and wives. I pray, Father God, that you restore with the canker worm and locusts has tried to take away in their life, Lord God, that you would bring it back, that first love, Lord God, that, that, that intimate passion they had for one each other when they first came together. I pray, Father God, for that in their lives. I pray for wholeness. I pray, Father God, that you would just... Put a hedge of protection around each and every person throughout this week, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that your angels go before us and make our way straight, that you would protect each and every one of us, Lord God. Lord, protect our pastors, Lord God, our leaders. 
I pray, Father God, a hedge of protection around them. And I pray, Father God, that you would give them a peace that surpasses all understanding in every situation, Lord God. I pray, Father God, for your anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage in people's life today. That people would not walk away today feeling like they're not changed, but they would be changed, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that, that they would not be the same from this moment forward, Lord. And it would be for your glory, your honor, your praise, Lord God. Lord, thank you for the testimonies of your people and the blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Lord, for that precious atoning blood in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that you are an awesome God. We love you today. You are high and lifted up. Be glorified today. In Jesus' mighty name, sometimes we think God's not doing something on our behalf when we're praying. But I want you to know God's the God of the midnight hour. He will show up and show out when you least expect it sometimes. Sometimes he does things instantaneously, just like the man that was blind. He was touched one time and didn't see things clearly, but that second touch, glory to God, he could see things clearly. That's my prayer for you today, that you can start seeing things clearly, that God will touch you and touch you and touch you. And that touch will turn into a change. Because we can have holy goose bumps and have a good service and, and everybody can leave out of here smiling and happy and full of joy. But when you hit the road surface out there and you get to your jobs and, and all that, if you don't have a change, it's not going to be the same. When you start allowing God to change your life, you're going to notice that you got more joy that you can even comprehend. You'll be like Sister Paula. Man, that, that just thrilled me, what the word that God brought through you this morning. You know, you can throw a fit. You can do whatever. But you know what? I choose to serve God wholeheartedly I choose to believe that he is a rewarder that those who diligently seek him I speak to those things that are not as though they were in my life he didn't call you to give up you can't give up can you Tony you got to march on. That's a living testimony. Every time I see Tony, I'm going, yep, that's my God. That's my deliverer. That's my healer. You know, he might not be running around the church right now. You heard me right now. Amen. I'm serious. Glory to God. God can do things exceedingly abundant above anything that we could think of or ask. Do not ever put limits on God. <laughs> People can fall off a roofs. Every time I look at your boys, I, I'm, I'm going, oh, my gosh. You remember the four-wheeler wreck? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can look at, at half a dozen people in here, and I'm going, wow, Good night. Man, I can, I can look at Josh and see Jim when they had that big wreck. And, and man, it looked like there was no way that somebody wasn't going to be able to live or walk through this. It's amazing. I look at my dad. 
Yet, my dad. <laughs> I wouldn't lived in a Christian home. I, I wouldn't raised in a Christian home, in other words. My dad followed the Ten Commandments. He followed the law by the T. He was rough as a cob. You know what? God has, has changed his heart so much. He's got a love for not only you guys, but that people around him. And I'm going, wow. He's a different person. He's changed. DJ, oh my gosh. I can remember when I first met DJ, and when God got a hold to him, glory to God. Woo! Steve Barker. Look at him. He's playing drums. He's driving a truck around the, the country. Glory to God. I can go on and on. I can remember when somebody couldn't get pregnant. Having babies all over the place. I remember somebody had a back problem. They don't have a back problem no more. Glory to God. Miracles all over this place. I remember somebody had marriage problems. They don't have marriage problems no more. Amen. Glory to God. I can remember when somebody was lonely. They're not lonely no more. Glory to God. If you look around, you can see miracle after miracle after miracle. But if you allow the enemy to come in your life and distract you, whose choice is it? It's yours. Look what God has done. Look what God has done. We can have that pity party like Miss Paula was talking about. And believe me, I've had some wild ones. And I've invited half of you guys into my pity parties. But you know what? Thank God for a loving church that they could wrap their arms around you and listen. They listen to you. They love on you. It'll be all right. God will take care of this. And you're going, he can't take care of this one. Yes, he can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be encouraged today. Father, in Jesus' name, as we go home, I just pray, Father God, that we take encouragement with us today, that we take joy with us today, a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that we would touch that dying world with a loving God. Lord, be their deliverer today. Be their joy and their peace. Huh. Glory to God. We give you the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.